In 10.3, we're focusing on geometric sequences. So first thing you should look at is the formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence. It's pretty similar to the one we learned in 10.2. So in 10.2, the formula for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence starts with a1. So you see that this formula also starts with a1. And then you add the common difference. And how many times you add the common difference is n minus 1. So the difference is you have a common ratio, and you don't add it, you multiply it. And if you multiply something, let's say, three times, if you do times r, times r, times r, well, that doesn't, that doesn't mean it's multiplied by 3r, but it means it gets multiplied by r to the third. So that's why you see the n minus 1 is now in the exponent. So three changes. The plus becomes times. The d becomes the common ratio r. And then this jumps up to the exponent, because when you multiply by r more than once, then it becomes r to the whatever power. All right, for number one, we want to find the next two terms. So the way we found the common difference was we took the second number and subtracted the first number. And so the way you find the common ratio, you take the second number and you divide by the first number. All right, I could cross out a trailing zero. 48 and 120, those are both divisible by 24. So the common ratio is 2 fifths. All right, and now we just keep multiplying by 2 fifths. 192 times 2 is 384. And we have a 5 underneath. And then 384 times 2 is 768. And then the bottom will become 25. All right, for number 2, we are finding a formula. So similar to what we did in 10.2, we are not going to plug in for a n, and we're not going to plug in for n. So for writing the formula, we want it to still say a n equals, right, here's a1 times, and I have to figure out what r is. So r is the second number divided by the first number. So r is 3, so it's a n equals a1 times r to the power n minus 1. All right now we're finding some geometric means. So we're starting with 2, and because it's geometric, we multiply by r. We multiply by r again. All right, so if you count, to get from 2 to 1250, that is four jumps, which means we multiplied by r four times. So that means r to the fourth. So we started with two. We multiplied it by r four times. So two times r to the fourth ends up equal equaling 1250. You could just jump to this step. So you know that r to the fourth equals... 1250 over 2, so r to the 4th equals 625. All right, because our exponent is even, we could have two answers, 5 and negative 5. All right, so that means the second number, the second number could actually be plus or minus 10. However, this, the third number, or the second blank, can only be 50. If r is 5, then we would have 2, then 10, then 50. If r was negative 5, we would have 2, then negative 10, then positive 50. So either way, this, the second blank is going to be positive 50. And then this one could be positive or negative 250.
Right. The next problem is asking us to find A6. So the sixth term is A6. All right. And the formula is A1, which was given, times R to the power N minus 1. But we know N is 6. So it's negative 3 times negative 2 to the 5th negative 3 times negative 2 to the 5th is negative 32. All right, so our answer is 96. All right, for 5a, we're finding another formula. An equals a1. All right, r is 2. You can see that they're multiplying by 2. You could do 10 divided by 5, that gives you 2. All right, on this one, we are not given A1, so we might have to do some work to find that. So the formula is An equals, all right, we don't have A1, so can we go back and find it? All right, so let's do a separate equation but let's plug in what we know we'll plug in a5 being 4 All right so a5 we'll let that be 4 we don't know a1 we'll call r 3 and because we plugged in 4 for a5 that makes n 5 All right, 3 to the 4th power is 81. All right, so we have our A1 is 4 over 81. All right, so going back to the first formula we tried to fill in, An equals A1 times r to the power n minus 1. All right, for 6, we're finding geometric means again. So we started with 3.12 multiplied by r once, twice, three times, four times. So 3.12 times r to the fourth and that makes our number 49.92. All right, divide both sides by 3.12, you get 16. And again, because the index is even, R could be positive or negative. All right, so this one can be plus or minus. 3.12 times 2 is 6. 0.24. The next one has to be positive. And then this one is positive or negative. 24.96. On the back, we're doing some partial sums. All right, so the formula is right here. All right, so let's do number seven, and that's how I'll introduce you to the formula. All right, so first thing we have to figure out is how many numbers are in this sum. So if you're starting at two and going to seven, that is six numbers. Common mistake is people think that's five numbers. You can count them on your fingers, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's six numbers. Another way to think about it, it's like reading chapters one through seven, except taking out chapter one. So it's not the first seven chapters because you don't have to read the first one. So it's the first seven chapters minus the one. So you do seven minus one. You don't do seven minus two because you want to keep two. All right, so sum of the first six numbers, 
We know it's geometric because the k is in the exponent. When it looks like when it looks like mx plus b, that's how you know it's arithmetic. All right, so we know it's geometric because the k is in the exponent. All right, so to figure out a1, we have to plug in 2. So 5 times 3 to the power 2 minus 1. That's just 5 times 3, or 15. So a1 is 15. 1 minus, all right, r is just the base, the base being the thing under the exponent. So r is 3 in this case. All right, so we have 1 minus 3 to the 6th over 1 minus 3. All right. You will need a calculator for this because 3 to the 6 is a really big number. All right, the bottom can be simplified to negative 2. So if you're using a calculator, this all equals 5,460. Right, for the next one, they're giving us the, the sum already. So I'm going to plug into the formula. All right, so we already know the sum. We don't know A1. 1 minus R to the power of N over 1 minus R. All right, I'm going to do two steps in one. The bottom is negative 1. I'm going to multiply that to the other side. All right, 2 to the 8th. Let's see, can we do that without a calculator? So 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. All right, so now I'm going to move up here. I have negative 1530 equals A1 times negative 255. If you divide both sides by 255, you get 6. All right, number 9. Doesn't look like they have a question, but when they say find, and then you see this symbol, that means you're finding a sum. Right, so there are 12 minus 3 terms. So there are 9 terms. Right, to find A1, you're going to plug in 4 for K. Right, so this is going to be 1 fourth times 2 to the, right, so k minus 1 is 4 minus 1, which is 3. All right, so we have 1 fourth of 8, which is 2. So our a1 is 2. The formula is a1, and then 1 minus, so r is whoever has the variable exponent above it, so r is 2 to the ninth over 1 minus 2. All right, so this one equals 2. All right, we just found that 2 to the 8th is 256. So that means 2 to the ninth is 512. All right, so our answer is I can just turn this into negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 511, which will be 1,022. All right, number 10 has some pretty big numbers. Let's plug into the formula. 
So the S formula says Sn equals A1, which we don't know. And then in parentheses, 1 minus, all right, we have a double negative, R to the N over 1 minus R. All right, so the bottom is 4. This is 4. Multiply that to the other side. That makes negative. All right, so 26,000 times 4 is 104,000. And then 240 times 4 is 960. All right, then we have 1 minus negative 3 to the 8th. All right, so some people look at this and they think double negative is going to make addition. That's actually not the case. So we have 1 minus, and then this is a positive number. So we have 1 minus 6,561. All right, so now we take both sides and divide by negative 6560. So the thing in parentheses is just negative 6560. So these would cancel each other out. And our answer would be 16. All right, in number 11, they tell us that a pyramid has a width that decreases by 1.57 meters every meter that you go up. So this is good practice for when we start to mix the problems together. This is actually an arithmetic sequence because it's decreasing by some fixed amount. So decreases means subtract, subtracting, and subtracting is basically adding a negative. So it's adding negative 1.57 each time so that makes it arithmetic. All right, so we're trying to find the width at the 86th meter. So we are finding A86. All right, so using the formula we learned in 10.2, they tell us that when it starts, it has a width of this amount. And then pyramids get skinnier as they go up, so then it's going down by 1.57. All right, and because we're finding the 86th, we're going to multiply by 86 minus 1. All right, and then I think I would just put that into a calculator. You get 95.77, and because it's a word problem, let's put some units. These are meters. All right, in the last one, we have a radio station that's offering two different prizes. So for plan A, you could get $1, then $2, then $3. And this goes on for three weeks. All right, so let's figure out what kind of sequence is it so this went up by one, but it also doubled. Remember, you can't tell what kind of sequence it is just from the first two numbers. You need the third number. So it went up by one, but it also doubled. But if you look at the change from the second to third, it went up by one again. So this is arithmetic. All right, so we want to find the sum of an arithmetic sequence, but only the first 21 terms. All right, so the formula for that is figure out how many pairs of number you, numbers you have. And then you take the first number, and then you add the last number. All right, so on the 21st day, I think we could logically figure out that the payment on the last day is going to be 21. 
All right, so we have 21 over 2 times 22, which is 21 times 11, which is $231. Right, and on this one we have we have a geometric sequence because it goes from one cent to two cents. So again, after the first two numbers, you can't tell is it times two or plus one. Once you get the third number, you can see that it's times two. All right, so this is a geometric sequence. Again, we're gonna find the sum of the first 21 days. So the formula starts with A1 on the right of the equation. A1 times 1 minus R to the power of N over 1 minus R. All right, so practice putting this into a calculator. And notice. Plan A was in dollars, so we did this one in cents, or we did it in dollars technically by changing one cent to 0 0.01 dollars. Right, so a calculator says that this would equal $20,971.51. Right, so now we have to answer the original questions. Which one will pay, which one will pay more? and how much more. All right, so it's pretty clear plan B will pay more. And then to find out how much more, take that number and subtract that number, and we get that it will pay $20,740.51 more. All right, that is all for 10.3.